grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm the Reverend Dr. Hilary Livingston, pastor of Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church in Newark, Delaware. We were founded back in 1706 at the headwaters of the Christiana Tributary. The head in our name means source, not in charge of. We believe Jesus is the source of our life and our love, and we hope you feel God's love flowing through us to you today. Love lives here, love flows from here. We hope you find being here a blessing. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning for this virtual worship service. We're glad you're with us today. Our organist is Linnea Raphael. If you'd like to follow along with our order of service, you can find a bulletin on our website at hocpc.org or on our Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church Facebook page. Let us now join our hearts in worship.
Friends, please join with me in our call to worship. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. God of unchangeable power, when you fashioned the world, the morning stars sang together, and the host of heaven shouted for joy. Open our eyes to the wonders of creation and teach us to use all things for good to the honor of your glorious name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, please join with me in singing our opening hymn this morning, Great is Thy Faithfulness, verses 1 and 3. Let us join together and sing. Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Yet if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this assurance, let us come before God, confessing our sin together, using the unison prayer printed in the bulletin, to be followed by a time of silent personal confession. Please pray with me. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful God, for his sake, that we may live a holy, just, and humble life to the glory of your holy name.
friends, hear the good news. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Friends, we will now turn to a reading from God's holy word. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this not merely as we expected. They gave themselves first to the Lord, and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that, as he has already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost earnestness, and in our love for you, we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, 
The gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this week, one of my colleagues reminded me that this past week marked the six-month anniversary of the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. It has been six months since lockdown, quarantine, masks, and social distancing. Six months since we have been worshiping virtually and not in our sanctuary. At the beginning of the year, I don't think any of us could have predicted what we'd be going through with this pandemic. It's been a long slog, and we're still not sure how much longer we'll be going through this. It is also stewardship season, and this is my fall stewardship message. Now, don't turn off the ta- don't turn off the tape. Don't turn off the film. You may argue that this is not a great time to think about stewardship, but you can relax because this is not going to be your typical stewardship sermon that tries to guilt you into giving more when you really don't want to. Instead, I'm inviting us I'm inviting us to reframe this stewardship season. Instead of focusing upon the difficulties we're facing, I want us to focus on the blessings God has given us and say a big thank you to everyone for all you do for this church. It's a difficult time, but I hope you'll find this stewardship message uplifting and enlightening, even as it challenges us to grow in generosity during this pandemic. Our text today comes from 2 Corinthians, a letter believed to be written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. It is likely one of several letters that Paul wrote to this congregation and the second letter to be included in the New Testament to this church. Our passage begins in chapter 8, where Paul says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Paul references the church in Macedonia, a small, not particularly well-off church, going through a severe ordeal of affliction. Perhaps we can relate to this during the pandemic. Despite this severe ordeal and their own extreme poverty, Paul commends the Macedonians' generosity, their sacrificial giving to those in dire need. Now, to give you a bit of historical background, the church in Jerusalem was suffering under a severe famine, and Paul was collecting funds from the various churches he planted to help out those in dire need there. Apparently, the Corinthian church had made some prior contributions toward this effort, but their gifts had slowed down by the time Paul was writing the second letter to them. And Paul urges the Corinthians to complete their generous giving to the Jerusalem church, which was in great need from this famine. Paul continues in verse 6, For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, that is, the Macedonian church, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that as he has already made a beginning, so he should complete this generous undertaking among you. Now a note that Titus was one of Paul's co-workers in ministry. 
Paul urges the Corinthian church to consider the example of generosity that the Macedonian church set and their giving. And he wanted the Corinthians to give generously themselves just as the Macedonians had. Paul's charge comes in verse 7. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. Just as the Corinthian church excels in other aspects of ministry, he desires them to also excel in giving. Paul doesn't want this plea for gifts to be a guilt trip, but rather an appeal to their discipleship as followers of Jesus Christ. Verses 8 and 9. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Paul's instruction for the Corinthians is to finish the good work of generosity that they had begun. Beginning in verse 10, he says, And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Even if the Corinthian gifts don't match up to those from other churches, they are still important. God counts our gifts as acceptable based upon our means to give, not compared against somebody else's means to give. Therefore, there is balance in their giving. Verse 15, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Like the Corinthians, and the Macedonians, and the Christians in Jerusalem in the first century, they were going through a difficult time, and so we are going through a difficult time with this pandemic. This period is no doubt causing all of us to experience a lot of anxiety, and not just anxiety about our health and safety and the well-being of our families, but also economic anxiety, both for our own livelihoods as well as for our church. Just like the Corinthians, we may be tempted to slow down our giving in anxious times. But I believe this text is urging us to press on in generosity and complete the work of our giving. That means fulfilling our financial commitment to the church for this calendar year, as well as making a generous commitment to give for next year. These are difficult times. But God has been generous to us in the past and will continue to see us through this pandemic and beyond. Now, I've said that this message is not meant to be a guilt trip, and I know it's tempting to roll our eyes and sigh when we're told to up our giving. So instead of guilting you into giving more, I'd like to take a different tack. In addition to growing in generosity, I'd like us to grow in gratitude So I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you. We are certainly living in strange times, aren't we? Here we are in the middle of a pandemic, and yet despite the difficulties of this time, we're still hanging in there together. Our physical doors may remain closed, but our church is still very much open for business, albeit in different ways. I want to say that I'm so proud of you, each and every one of you. I'm proud of us, proud of what we've been able to do together over these difficult months. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you, how you've risen to this challenge to continue being the church together. We're still being a family together. We're still praying for one another, calling one another, checking in on one another, and helping one another out when we can. We're taking care of each other. This summer, I encouraged each of us to think like a deacon 
and look for ways to take care of others in our church and community during this pandemic season. Your session members and deacons and care and fellowship folks are going above and beyond to care for our members while also keeping the administrative functioning of our church going during this time. But all of you have also stepped up. You are doing your part to care for one another, think like a deacon, and stay together as a church. So thank you to everyone for staying together and sticking it out during this tough time. I know it's been a difficult long season, but I appreciate everyone's work and efforts. We're also gathering for worship virtually and in our outdoor services. So thank you to everyone who is tuned in every week to our virtual services, participated in our Zoom fellowship hour and our Facebook live sessions after worship. Thanks to everyone who has come to our outdoor services, braving the bugs and the weather and Pastor Hillary's unique worship elements like waving ribbon sticks and shaking rhythm eggs and using apple cider and donuts for communion elements. Thanks to our musicians, our organist Linnea, as well as our college singers who have adapted on very short notice to radically changing conditions. Thank you for your, your musical contributions that enhance our worship and for your versatility and positive attitude through it all. Thank you for ins providing inspiring, beautiful music during this chaotic time. As a church, we're also taking care of our neighbors in our community. Our mission and outreach volunteers are continuing their work to help the homeless and the hungry in our community during this time, making and serving meals, putting together go bags, and providing comfort and assistance to the most vulnerable in our community. Thank you for your resilience, dedication, creativity, and hard work that make it all happen. Our community is blessed by your efforts. We're all learning how to be the church in this new situation. We've learned so much new technology. We've learned how to Zoom and get on Facebook Live and watch videos on our YouTube channel. I've expanded my pastoral skills to include video production, social media marketing, and digital ministry. They don't teach how to pastor during a global pandemic in seminary. But fortunately, I've had a lot of help and support from all of you, and I'm very grateful. That means so much to me. I've received so many cards and gifts and words of encouragement, and they have really touched my heart during this time. During this time when we can't be together in person, it can be hard to gauge how things are going, if you're doing a good job, if you're doing enough. So thank you for the positive words of encouragement, for your faithfulness in engaging in virtual worship over these past few months. Thank you also for your patience and support as we learn how to be the church together during this challenging time. I know it hasn't been easy. I greatly appreciate you supporting me and supporting this church through all these challenges. During the stewardship season, I greatly appreciate you investing in me as your pastor in a full-time capacity. I know pastors are expensive in our system with a full-time salary and benefits, and I'm grateful you've invested in that. I do not take that for granted. And I'm grateful that you not only invest in me financially, but also working with me and trusting me and giving me space to try out some new ideas and, and new things during this difficult time. Your support has meant so much to me, and I thank you so much. We've also kept up our giving and generosity during this pandemic. Although our giving's been down a bit, overall we've been holding our own, and thank you for your continued giving to our church. We really appreciate you sending in your offerings and utilizing our online giving platform. Your giving keeps us financially stable during this period and enables us to continue doing the ministry we're called to do as a local church. We're in the midst of our stewardship campaign, as I said, and you should have all received your pledge cards for the coming year. And I encourage you to prayerfully consider what God is putting on your heart to give to the work of this church. 
If you are uncomfortable making a formal pledge, you may also give an estimate of what you think you'll be able to give in the coming year. I know this pandemic period has been challenging and many are facing increased financial pressures with the economic uncertainty of this time. If you can afford to do so, please pledge to give generously to our church for the coming year. Your gifts make all we do possible and we are truly grateful for each and every gift. To help you in your discernment, we've asked a longtime church member to share what this church has meant to her over the years. I hope hearing this story of her faith and how this church has touched her life will inspire you and inspire you to think about what this church means to you as you ponder and discern your stewardship commitment for the coming year. And so I'd like to introduce Kay Brooke to share her thoughts on stewardship. I have always been a Presbyterian. I grew up in a small town in the middle of the Allegheny National Forest in Pennsylvania, which had the distinction of having five churches and five bars. As a little girl, I remember putting pennies, nickels, and dimes in the Sunday school collection plate while we sang, Jesus loves me and Jesus loves the little children. I joined the junior choir and the youth fellowship and enjoyed camping at Camp Corbley with many friends where we contributed money for the less fortunate to join us. John and I were married in that church 60 years ago. Since moving to Newark, we have been involved with Head of Christiana. Our daughter was married here, our children and grandchildren were baptized here, and Head of Christiana is a constant in our lives. I'm asking you to consider your relationship to Head of Christiana and how much it means to your life. Please consider a stewardship pledge to keep our 314-year-old home operating. Jesus said, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This pandemic has changed us in so many ways. I'm asking you to seriously consider how you can invest your treasure. We miss you all and look forward to seeing Head of Christiana flourishing again. I will always be a Presbyterian and I hold this church in my heart. Thank you, Kay. Your story sharing what our church has meant to you is inspiring. And so, friends, thank you for giving of your time, your service, your leadership, your experience, and your showing up week after week to support the ministry of this church. I'm humbled and grateful for all you do for our church. Without your varied gifts, it would not be possible to do all that we do. So thank you. This church has weathered many storms over our 300 plus year history, and we will get through this coronavirus pandemic. And we will get through it together as a church family. Jesus promised never to leave us or forsake us. Just as Paul instructed the Corinthians to complete the giving that they had begun during a really tough season, so I encourage us to complete the work of giving this stewardship season, a very unique stewardship season. We're in a really tough season with this pandemic, but we will get through this. And despite the difficulties of this present moment, let us continue growing in gratitude and generosity, remembering the many blessings God has given us and our church over our 300 plus year history. May we go forth in gratitude and generosity, even during this pandemic. And may the Lord bless this message to our hearing. Amen.
Friends, God's word says each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Friends, we're not in our sanctuary to pass the plate for our Sunday offering, but we do greatly appreciate your gifts to our church. We encourage you to continue sending in your gifts. You can send in a check to Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church at the address found on our Facebook page, or you can use our new online giving platform on hocpc.org under the Give tab. Your gifts help maintain our building, pay our staff, and contribute to all the works of ministry we do toward our mission and our community. So we encourage you to give generously. Thank you for your gifts, and God bless. And now, friends, we are going to go into a time of prayer. This is going to be a more general prayer, but if you have particular joys or concerns you wish to share, please join us for a Facebook Live session on our Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church Facebook page following this pre-recorded virtual worship service if you're viewing it at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday morning. You can join us for this Facebook Live, share your prayer concerns, and I'll be happy to lift in prayer, and we can have some fellowship time together then as well. We use an ecumenical version of the Lord's Prayer to conclude our prayer time. It says sins and sin against us, but you may feel free to pray that portion in whatever version is most familiar to you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer our petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will and show your steadfast love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Gracious God, you have called us to be the Church of Jesus Christ. Keep us one in faith and service, breaking bread together and proclaiming the good news to the world, that all may believe you are love, turn to your ways, and live in the light of your truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, whom we cannot love unless we love our neighbors, remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people, so that your children may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten, and live together in your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful God, Sovereign over the nations, direct those who make, administer, and judge our laws, the President of the United States and all others in authority among us, our Congress, our Governor, and our state and local leaders, that guided by your wisdom they may lead us in the way of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick, cheer them by your word, and bring healing as a sign of your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. God of comfort, Stand with those who sorrow, that they may be sure that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall separate them from your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mighty God, whose word we trust, whose spirit enables us to pray, 
accept our requests and further those which will bring about your purpose for the earth through Jesus Christ who rules over all things and who taught us to pray saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, please join with me now in our closing hymn, We Give Thee But Thine Own, verses 1 and 5. Let us now join together and sing. And now, friends, receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day and always. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Go in peace.
friends, thank you for joining us today for our virtual worship service. We hope you'll join us each and every Sunday morning here on our Head of Christiana Presbyterian Church Facebook page and our YouTube channel for our virtual worship service. We're glad you're here. If you enjoyed this service and found it a blessing, we hope you will like and share it with your friends. Sharing is caring. And if you're watching this on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be doing a Facebook Live following this on our Facebook page. And you can come and pass the peace, share any particular joys or concerns that you have for prayer, and we can just hang out together online for a bit. So I hope you will join us. Thanks again and have a blessed week.